What RM Williams says is that if your RM Williams Craftsman boot is your go-to from Monday to Friday, then this boot is the one to reach for when the weekend rolls around. It sure is. How you going? Welcome back to the Bootlosophy channel, and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live and work on, the Wajik people. And this is made by an Australian iconic bootmaker, RM Williams. This is the new ish model called the Goodwood, which appeared, I think, uh, about a year ago, uh, maybe a bit longer, but it has been hard to get because it sells out every time the shelves are restocked. Originally appearing in this uh, bark colour, it's now also available in a lighter vintage brown, uh, also in this crazy horse leather. Following RM's traditions, it is a Chelsea boot, made from one piece of leather, kept on your foot by being uh, snug at the instep and the heel, uh, and these elastic goring panels. They use a new RM Williams last, which is fuller at the ball of the feet and ending up with a rounded toe box uh, with a profile that's, I, I think, very reminiscent of a pair of uh, blunnies or blundstones. If you know RM Williams, especially from overseas, you'll be uh, more familiar with the Craftsman or Comfort Craftsman models, uh, first introduced in, I think it was 1965, with the longer, sleeker toe box that ends in a chisel toe, where uh, that one is worn by people in the city and to boardrooms and business scenarios, it still is worn in the bush and on dust roads and cattle stations. The Goodwood, however, is pure and simple, a kick around casual boot with this blunt round toe and in the crazy horse distressed uppers, it's not for the boardroom. The thick Goodyear welted rubber outsole and chunky low block heel gives vibes of being in the paddock for what RM calls modern endurance. <laughs> this style just combines function with comfort with style. However, uh, with today's post-COVID dressing styles, especially in Australia, even professional offices like mine and in other accountants' and lawyers' offices, uh, today's neat but relaxed dressing fits the aesthetic of this boot. I wear it to work in chinos, and while it suits a pair of khaki chinos, I think it also pairs well with a darker brown uh, pair like these from New Zealand brand Rod and Gun. Being at work and keeping it simple, I'll usually wear it with a conservative button-up shirt in pale blue or white. Uh, I'll also throw on a darker blazer, uh, more often than not because it's a business-like look, but also I find coats and blazers are men's handbags with the pockets useful for your EDC and keys. However, it's certainly a very casual boot, so I wear it weekends paired with jeans, of course. <laughs> I, I find that a straight leg jean rather than a slim fit pairs better with this chunky look. Even in warmer weather, I don't wear t-shirts out usually, preferring a collar. So a soft work shirt works, especially with the sleeves rolled up. When it's cooler, I'd wear it with sleeves rolled down and maybe have a t-shirt or Henley shirt underneath and as it gets cooler, I throw on a jacket like this Flit and Tinder waxed trucker jacket from Huckbury. You can see my review of it up in the corner. If it gets wet and colder, what better to throw on another RM Williams product against the rain, their own dry skin jacket. Their version of an Aussie waxed sailcloth drover's jacket. I've also reviewed this jacket and I'll put a link to the review in the top corner. In fact, I'll also put links to the various websites down in the description below. Uh, some of them are affiliate links and some are not. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the brand RM Williams, uh, in this video at least. My subscribers will have seen my other RM reviews, but if you're new to this channel, go and check my channel for other RM Williams boot reviews, like this one up here. And in those reviews, I give you a detailed history of RM Williams. So in this video, I'll go straight into the construction. And I will spend a bit of time talking about their Goodyear Welt construction, even though I've done so loads of times in all my videos. <laughs> a commentator did say in one of my videos that I talk about Goodyear Welting uh, too many times because boot nerds already know about it. 
Look, I do these videos because I love boots and I want to tell you about boots. <laughs> and in doing so, I do remember that when I started, I knew nothing. Um, so while I'm giving out information for people who also collect boots, boot nerds, I do realize that a lot of people new to the boot world might check out my videos for information to inform their next or even their first buy. And honestly, uh, to just cater for fellow boot nerds like myself is basically telling beginners to rack off, right? <laughs> like we're a club you don't belong to. And that's wrong. Anyway, the good wood is good you welted, which is one way of connecting the uppers to the soul. If you want to check out all the different ways, go through this video up here about the four main types of boot construction. In Goodyear welting, a thin strip of leather uh, called the welt is first sewn onto the insole inside the boot and stitches the insole to the turned in uppers on the inside. Then on the outside, the midsole and outsole are glued on and then stitched through the welt on the outside, thus making the stitch line that you see on top of the welt and on the bottom of the sole. So there are two stitches, one that you can't see connecting the uppers to the insole and one on the outside connecting the boot to the outsole construction. And in this way, no single one stitch hole goes all the way from outside to the inside, thus stopping moisture from wicking into the boot. It is also resolvable. When the outsole wears thin, your cobbler can pick out that outer stitch peel off the glued on outsole and glue and then stitch on a new outsole without even disturbing the inside or even the uppers of the boot. In this case, it's a 360 degree welt, meaning it goes all the way around the boot. In the Craftsman, it's a 270 degree welt, meaning it only uh, wraps around the front three quarters of the boot. Uh, a 360 welt is arguably more water resistant. And in this case, they also use a storm welt to make it even more water resistant. A storm welt is where the welt has a carved lip that is pressed up against the side of the boot when it's stitched on. Uh, the outsole itself is a proprietary rubber outsole made especially for RM Williams and incorporating their uh, long horn brand molded on along with a size and width imprint. I believe the uh, midsole on these is also rubber and so the outsole construction, including the midsole, is a good uh, one centimeter, 10 mils thick of rubber. The outsole is grippy with these uh, V-treads and the compound is firm, but not hard. The heel is an all rubber heel block, glued and nailed on. Uh, inside the boot, RM used what they call a comfort insole. I am almost, but I'm not 100% certain that they use a leather insole like they start with on a classic Craftsman. But on top of that is a thick rubber compound. It's not removable. It's a comfort insole that adds a lot of shock absorption without the annoyingly soft squish of foam. If you uh, stick your fingers down inside to feel the sides of the insole, you do feel a thick squishiness and then the firmer leather or what feels like leather insole. It's finished off with another rubber pad under the heel. The inside of the boot is fully lined with either calf skin or kid skin, I think, very soft. The total thickness of the outside uh, crazy horse leather and the lining is about three mils thick. It's hard to measure with my calipers because the leather up the shaft here is actually slightly padded between the uppers and the lining for comfort and a snug fit. The upper is a whole cut crazy horse in distressed brown that RM calls bark. Uh, let's unpack that a bit. A whole cut means that the boot is made from one piece of leather. Now with other Chelsea boots, you may see a seam uh, under the goring uh, panels here and here, connecting the front and back pieces of the leather of the boot. Others might have a vamp piece that sort of stitches up the instep. RM Williams make their Chelsea boots as hole cuts, which is a very difficult and time and labor consuming process. You can imagine how difficult it is uh, to pull a, a flat piece of leather around a 3D last and not end up with any puckering or wrinkling uh, as you bend it. But you also need to cure it around the shape so that it doesn't spring back when you release it. And that means keeping it wrapped around the last of the, of the mold for days on end. And as we all know, 
time is money. The crazy horse leather is not from a horse, it is bovine. It's called crazy horse because it's used to make saddles and you know other horsey gear that I know a lot about. <laughs> it's actually a slightly corrected four grain leather, basically a new buck finish which is tanned with waxes and oils to give it that distressed finish rather than the clean velvety new buck like a new Timberland yellow boot. The hand, the feel of it, is soft and waxy with a fine velvet feel under your touch. It's easy to care for and it's robust and in fact the more you whack it around the more it looks distressed and patinas beautifully, uh, showing off all the scuffs and colour variation of wear. The stitching is just superb with no missed stitches and with all the rows neat, parallel and clean. And of course sewn into the collar at the front and the back, uh, RM's iconic cloth pull tabs embroidered with their brand with uh, Made in Australia and the address of the original factory which is now a boot museum. This pair is actually a factory second which you can see uh, from the whole punch it there. When I bought it, I couldn't see what was wrong with it and they told me the toe of the left boot was marked and you can see it, I think. But after a couple of months and the whole boot has got marked, if I didn't point it out to you, would you really have seen it? If that was the reason for this being a second and I honestly have not found another, that speaks a lot about RM's quality control to sort of chuck this out as a second. I said that caring for Crazy Horse was easy. Uh, on RM's, uh, on their boot care page on the website, they give you guides for different leathers. Crazy Horse is grouped with suede and new bucks. They say that prior to first wear, to spray with your suede protector, which waterproofs it for a while. You do have to repeat the process every now and then. Uh, for cleaning though, they recommend brushing with a suede brush, then spray their suede cleaner onto a rag and wiping it all over the boot, not spot cleaning. Only focus on one spot with the brush and cleaner if there actually is a stubborn stain. Once dry, nap up the boots with the suede brush again and then reapply the suede protector. Now I will leave a link to their care products down below, but you can substitute them for a good quality water protector like Tarago's Nano Spray uh, and uh, a good suede cleaner from another brand. Don't forget though, the crazy horse looks best distressed. So you shouldn't stress about scuffs and pressure marks, you know, just keep it clean and, and free from dust. RM Williams uses the uh, UK sizing format. This means their size numbers are one number down from US like Viberg. So if you're a 9 US say, you'd be looking at starting with a UK 8. Their width letters are their own. Uh, in the UK convention, brands seem to make up their own width letters. RM, for example, uses the letter G as their average width, not the US D. But then again, Grenson, the UK company, uses the letter F to denote average and others use E or F. Um, Australian bootmaker Wooten says that the point at which you start in the alphabet is entirely arbitrarily. We, Wooten, could easily say X or Y or Z instead of D, E or F. So how would you size RMs? Well, definitely at least true to size as measured on a Brannock device. Uh, only if you're in, in the US, remember to take a whole number down. But they are difficult to size and I'll give you my experience. I'm measured as a UK 7.5 uh, from heel to toe as well as from heel to ball in an average width. In the US, I'd be true to size at 8.5D, nearly an E, not quite. Since RM calls the D width G, I should be 7.5G, true to size. However, I have found to my experience that the best fit for me is an RM Williams 8G. That's a half size up. If I do true to size, my ball comes under pressure. I have tried going up a width to an H, but it's just too wide. The whole boot then becomes too floppy and sloppy when I walk. In an 8G, the toe is maybe 3 to 6 mils long. It's that little, depending on the shape. But the ball length is fine and the ball width is perfect. As for comfort, it's in the name. <laughs> the comfort insole is very shock absorbing and coupled with the a thick rubber outsole, you can walk all day in concrete or rocks and feel fresh at the end of the day. They have a fiberglass shank between the heel and the ball of the, uh, of the foot 
and that does give as good a support to your arches as a steel shank and it's airport friendly. As for value, this is where I say I've been wrong in the past. If you watch my earlier reviews of RM Williams boots, you find me a little uncommitted about their value. In some of, the, of those videos, I will actually say that price rises, recent ones, have built in a brand factor. Now I've changed my mind. Why? I've been looking at comparable function and form in other Chelsea boots, not just the actual Chelsea boot. What would you say compare these with? Uh, while they look like blunnies, you can't seriously compare them. Blunnies are not hole cut and they use a TPU sole uh, and they also use a heat molded construction method which is not repairable. Uh, also, while I don't care about where they're made, if the quality is there, blunnies are made overseas and we do have to recognise that the price savings of labour and factory infrastructure uh, exist in some countries. Try comparing them to the Bourdon Isidro boot in their blunt-nosed work boot style. Bourdon sell those for around 400 US. That's about 620 Aussie. Okay, they are handmade, but so in a sense are these. These are made in numbers, not one at a time, but they are made by a crew of craftsmen, uh, not in a factory line. While I love the ruggedness of Bourdon, these are finely and carefully finished. Now, I didn't know Nick's made Chelsea boots. That was pointed out to me. Um, they sell for nearly 600 US. That's nearly a thousand Aussie. Now, yeah, they're built like a brick shit house for sure. But if you don't want a tank, you just want a Humvee, they're not in the ballpark. <laughs> uh, Kamina doesn't make a work boot, like, uh, work boot like Chelsea. But let's take a look at their Spanish compatriot, Mierman. Now, Mierman make a whole cut Chelsea on rounder toe last and they use rugged looking leathers for under 300 US. Now I don't have any experience of the ruggedness of Mearmen, but that's certainly a contender. So all in all, at Aussie 649 or US 415, maybe 500 when sold in the US, Aaron Williams plays in the same playground but with 80 years of experience. Yeah, I'm now seeing that they could be worth Aussie 649, but if not already, any more price rises and it will be peaking the crest. So there you go, my review of the new model from RM Williams, the do anything, go anywhere, Goodwood boot. If you're overseas and you like the Australianness of the Blundstone, but you're not sure of the durability of that TPU sole and the you know, throwaway nature of the heat bonded sole construction, maybe take a look at these for your everyday pull on boots. Well, I hope you liked the review. If you did, Show me some love and click on like and subscribe. I've got a few interesting videos in the works coming up, including a deep dive uh, into boot pricing by brands. So uh, if you don't want to miss that, make sure that you do subscribe. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.